Hello, and welcome to my studio. I am Rachel Juanita, the artist behind Soul Rain Art, where our mission is to create art, workshops, and experiences that empower the soul to reign. If you are new to my studio, come on in, take a seat, play with all of the supplies, okay? I am so excited about this project today. So first, a little backstory. Um, I had the fortunate privilege in February, that's pre-pandemic, um, stay home, stay safe. And I do hope and pray each of you are staying well and you're staying home and you're staying safe. But before all that happened, I had four glorious days at a Seth Aptor retreat. Um, and it was just, it was glorious. It was glorious. Anyway, on the last day, um, as I was leaving, uh, Seth asked me, did I tell you that Seth and I are cousins? Okay. No, seriously. Ask him. He'll tell you that we are cousins. Anyway. So on the last day I'm about to leave and my cousin says, he says, Rachel. And I said, what fam? And he says, uh, cause that's how we talk. Cause that's how we talk. And I said, um, uh, what? He says, um, well, I was wondering if you would like to, um, test out some of my new Aladine products. <laughs> and um, in collaboration with Stencil Girl and do a project and do a, uh, participate in a blog hop. And of course I said, uh, yeah, why? One, because you're fam. And that's what we do. We help fam out. And two, because my rider dies, the people who have subscribed and people are in my tribe, they know I love all the products. <laughs> And then he said, stencil girl. Now, let me just, for the record, make it plain. I am not a stencil loyalist. I am not. I love all <laughs> stencils. But stencil girl are by far my favorite. And not only that, Mary Beth is amazing. And if Seth and I weren't cousins, well, you know what? Maybe we're all related. Huh, I never thought about that. But now, anyway. I have, I have just an abundance of Stencil Girl stencils, and as you can see, they are well-loved. I mean, you look at these, <laughs> you look at these and compared to this brand new one, and I mean, I've got so many stories and layers on these stencils, nevertheless. So, of course, I said yes, and here we are. So, if you are curious to see what I cre can create with these products then stick around because I have a treat for you. Okay, let me jump right in before I forget. I'd be remiss and regretful if I didn't say thank you to Aladine for providing some products to test. Uh, they are amazing products. I'm going to use all three types of products, if you will, from, the, from Seth After's product line. And I also want to give a shout out and a plug to Stencil Girl Stencils. Uh, and since this is a blog hop, I want to say thank you to Seth. And I want to tell everyone to follow along and find, go to the next person on the um, blog hop. Check us all out. Art for me is a way to grow and heal emotionally, spiritually, and culturally. So I often explore various cultures in my art. So for this piece, I was inspired by um, the African textile known as Adare. It is from the people of um, Nigeria, the Yoruba people. Um, the process is called Adare, and it is a, it means to tie and to dye. And it's an ancient uh, textile tradition, and I was just fascinated by the shapes, the patterns, and how they use stencils, and so it fit. All right, so here's uh, the stars of the show, the products that we're going to use today. These are the stencils. Oh, this was hard to select stencils, <laughs> but these are the ones we're going with. Um, I use these glazes, and I made some custom colors because I needed a dark color, so I used the Golden High Flow. Here are the pigments um, that I used. And I use the following 
embossing powders as tests. And um, one of the things I would encourage you is to make them your own. You'll see that I put them in watercolor brushes. So again, here are the stars of the show and let us begin our process. So our process begins with the resisting part. Now, I have this on super, super speed because uh, here I am playing mad scientist. And so what I did was I tried um, various resist techniques and I, on this one, I used the um, glaze as a resist. I used my jelly plate to put it down and um, you're just going to see me here. I, in the, in the bigger workshop, my larger workshop, which is free, I go slower and I talk you through what I'm actually doing. But I just wanted you guys to get a glimpse that in my, in this process of creating resist, I tried three different resist techniques. I tried resist with the glaze. I am going to try resist with the, um, the pigment ink and I try resist with the embossing powder and I also I try and explore them on four different types of paper so that we can see which one works the best ultimately I like the way that it performed on watercolor paper and so that's what we go with and um, <laughs> uh, oh you, mental note and a, a big tip <laughs> is to make sure you clean off the glaze off your stencils um, it is sticky and uh, it will um, make your stencil stick. And some of the stencils from Stencil Girl, they have really delicate cuts and so you don't want them to stick together. I normally don't clean my stencils. I am um, a dirty stencil girl. But when I use different mediums, like in this case, the glaze and I'm gonna use the pigment ink, then it's important to clean. The second way I tried to create the resist was using the pigment ink painted directly onto uh, onto watercolor paper or the various papers through a stencil. Now this is very um, reflective of actual the act one of the actual techniques that they use in the Adore technique. They use a starch um, as a resist and they paint it through a stencil or they hand draw it. So this one was fun because it, it, it helped me connect with the actual tradition. Um, since I'm not using, totally using the technique, I'm adapting the technique to the supplies that I have. And this, this, I will tell you the truth, this part took a while, but I enjoyed it. I allowed myself to just be there. And I think that that's important when we're creating art that we don't focus so much on the end result as we do on the process and of being present in the moment. And I had to literally be very present in the moment because uh, this process was detailed, but it was, um, it got a lot of the details, but you're gonna see I don't go with this product in the end. This is the method that wins the day. Now, at first, oh my gosh, I was totally risking it all. I poured that, <laughs> I poured that pigment right there on my jelly plate. And of course my jelly plate was not clean because you are gonna see this light blue comes from somewhere. It's probably a teal or an indigo or something that's mixing with the white. Nevertheless, I had way too much pigment ink on the plate. And so I have what we would call a resist soup sandwich so i'm going to keep going because that's just the type of girl i am i'm going to keep i'm going to persist until i conquer and uh yeah eventually though i get just the right amount and that's the lane the learning here was that just keep going and you really need a thin coat and you'll see in the final project that we don't put on too much we actually put on just the right amount and so Moral of the story is you may put on too much, just keep pulling. Unless you're working on expensive watercolor paper, then you gotta get it right. And so the last resist technique is to use embossing powder. And I am gonna use the Wow embossing pad. And I'm gonna use, I actually tried the three different types. I tried um, Seth Apter's White Cloud, one of his velvets. His baked velvets and then here I am trying the vintage beeswax and I wanted to try that and I really hoped it was going to be to work because again it would have been the closest um, approach to one of the ancient traditional approaches where they use 
wax to create the resist. Yeah, but I didn't like it as so much. But what did win was the embossing powder. And I used one of Seth's um, WOW embossing powders in Blue Moon, you're gonna see in a minute. Now, the vintage beeswax is a really cool effect um, for resist and dyeing. It just didn't give me the details that I wanted. So that will be the difference. The vintage beeswax gives a very creamy, very waxy, um, I just did a whole different per a different result. And so it has its place, but for the look that I was going for, um, the embossing powder wins. And so I'm going to just do uh, what we do. I'm testing out stencils. I will tell you that these stencils here, these four by fours, they get so much use in my world. I use them all the time, especially that one that you see there. Uh, both of those, I use those literally all the time. And I have them listed in my description box. I believe this one is by the gentleman Weebly, maybe? Anyway, I just love it. It reminds me of African Shields, which is why I love it. So there you go. I'm pouring. As you see, I am a generous embossing powder uh, pour I use I use all the jar in every application I use the entire jar I don't think that's how you're supposed to let's just say um, I just do what works for me and that's what works for me you put the whole jar on there because why I have the that little handy dandy blue thing I bought back in my scrapbooking days and kept it and use it all the time to put it back in the jar and then uh, there we go and so what we're going to do is we're going to heat emboss so let's just talk about a minute to talk about my clean glass plate I want you all to know that I cleaned it just for the shooting because normally that 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 plate has lots of um, lots of love on it <laughs> anyway you're gonna see on the table if you're like me you're watching the heat emboss is magical but sometimes you just want to talk about other things and so on the table there with me, I have all of the um, water brush pens. I think I rushed through that part of the conversation, but I put um, I put all of my paint, all of the dye sprays into water brushes. And um, see the magic happen? The details are amazing, but wait till you see what happens when I put the dye on the embossing. Okay, I am showing you the three samples and we're off. Ooh! This part was so fun because I am a mad scientist. And so when I decided I was going to do explore the color indigo, um, I had a problem. Not really a problem, but a challenge and we found a solution. So uh, there are three blues. There's a uh, sea spray, a blue moon, and a turquoise. And what you see me is I, I swatched them out and I realized, okay, none of these are dark enough. So I had to experiment and create something darker. And so I grabbed um, both the lavender and the uh, cassis or cases. I, I, uh, yeah, saying colors is not my thing. <laughs> anyway, I grabbed the two purples and a black because indigo actually has purple in it and it has black in it. And so what I found out also is that the licorice color already has some purple in it. So what, what ends up winning is this mixture of blue moon and licorice. That's what creates the color right there. That becomes our indigo color. And I think it's, uh, I want to say it was equal parts indigo. I'm sorry, equal parts licorice, equal parts blue moon, which was risky because black has a tendency to take over a color but because indigo is technically a blue black we went with a equal part uh, mixture but i made lots of different colors of indigo um, I, and here you just see me swatching them out so this is one i think priscilla my daughter who is five is also a mad scientist and she's fearless with color she'll do something and i'll be like oh don't do that and sure enough that's the one that wins but she made a mixture hers was first mine is second and then um, there's another combination. I think that's the one we just made. And uh, so I literally just made different consistencies. I tried it with lavender. And on the back, oh, a little tip. On the back of these little swatches, I write the formula down. So that way I can go back um, later at various times 
and see what, what the actual combinations were. For example, um, I have one that is um, black, blue, and um, even parts. One time I mix in a little coffee to give it a different look by accident, or i.e. Priscilla, she mixed in a teal and um, the gold mine, which was really cool. I'm not teal, the turquoise and the gold mine. Anyway, the moral to the story is to play and have fun. They're your supplies, and if, if by chance you mess it up, right, you can always buy more. <laughs> They're at a price point where you can buy more. So please use your supplies, have fun, make them your own. Yeah, here you see me um, uh, realizing that Priscilla has gold mine, uh, the gold mine color, I believe, is, is which is has mica in it, and the mica actually doesn't work very well in the brush. But so um, we we tried to get it out of there, but it had some residue. Now, because I like to spray, I like the effect of spraying. And I like the effect of a water brush, and I like the expect the effect of a uh, actual paintbrush. I put that mixture, equal parts licorice, equal parts blue moon, into a mini mister so that I could spray it. I also put I will use it in the three forms later, just because they give different consistencies. When you spray out of the eye zinc bottle, you get a um, a vast spray and uh, the parts of it will be heavy and parts of it will be light. When you put it in a mister, you get more of a mist, more of a refined spray. And when you put it um, direct out of, um, when you apply it directly with the paintbrush, you get a very solid um, distribution. So the, you know, the point is, Use your, use your, use your, use your supplies. Find ways to use them that, that work best for you. The spraying and then the d distribution with the um, paintbrush, I found worked very well. It gives some variation um, in the color. And if you let it dry, like with the big parts that are the puddles, you'll get some dark spots. Anyway, this is the final color that wins. This becomes the indigo of our picture. And this becomes another one that we use. So I use them interchangeably. They kind of look alike, but one has um, more of a gray tone, probably has more of the licorice in it, and the other one has more of the purple in it. Anyway, what you see here is I also played Mad Scientist <laughs> with the glazes. I needed the colors to work in my color palette. So what I did was I put um, the glaze acted as kind of my medium, if you will. It was the binder of the color, so I put coffee. Coffee became the signature for us. Um, it's a dark color, and the coffee and the night, I used them um, heavily to create indigo. So I used uh, like two parts, three parts, maybe I think I put like a squirt of of the night color and a squirt of the coffee and then on this round i actually used the blue moon right out of the jar i poured it directly in um, and i get to mix it now what i found in my mad scientist experiments is um you can put too much liquid and totally change <laughs> the makeup and composition of um <laughs> of the glaze and so what you do is you just put more glaze back in and you put some more and you just just work it 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 until it, it gets back together and it will get back to a good consistency so um in terms of color mixing don't be afraid a lot of people you know if if the designer didn't make that color they're like well i'm not going to make my own color i don't think designers get offended i think especially like designers like Seth, they actually appreciate when you make it your own and so I would just encourage you to make it your own. Don't be afraid to mix. You see here right there, I put some more of that blue in and there is the golden high flow. I use the golden high flow to, to quickly get to the pigment and color that I needed. And so that's why I'm using the high flow. And you get back to mix. Okay, so the question of the hour is what are these little cute little jars? They are the Distress Ranger storage jars that you can buy on Amazon. And I bought like 18 of them, not for this project, for another project, but they worked. And I labeled them. 
And if you want to see more details about how I do all this, go to Soul Rain Academy and check out the free workshop. I just wanted you to see up close and personal the two colors that we went with, as well as the glaze of choice. And let's begin. Yay, the project. The first step of the project was to prep the paper and create the pattern. And so what I did was I laid out kind of a, um, a textile type pattern, if you will, that would look like a piece of cloth, a big piece of cloth. And so I have a uh, uh, 12 by 18 watercolor or 12 by 24, actually, I think it's 12 by 24, 12 by 24 piece of 300 pound watercolor paper here. Um, arches, good quality watercolor so that it'll, it'll stand up to all the water that I'm, all of the liquid we're going to put. So we apply the resist. The first step is apply the resist. And for this project, I'm actually going to use the three different types of resist that we use. So the first one is going to be a, the glaze. I'm going to use the ice as my first resist. Now, um, I needed to, uh, I don't want to say, how do I say? I needed to create, okay, how about this to say it, right? So <laughs> I'll just say it. Um, the white, and I think it's known as Snowball, had too much shimmer. It's very uh, kind of a metallic-y white. I needed more of a matte white, and so I just added Blick Matte White paint to it. And that knocked it down a little bit. It still will have some shimmer, but not a whole lot. And I am just using a palette knife to apply it. I also use my little scraper. Apparently, though, I had some blue left over on my scraper, and it's coming through. And so I'm trying to get it off. But, you know, we do what we do, and we figure out how to get it off. And so this, what I'm here is I'm just cleaning up um, my application of the stencil to make sure that it's evenly on there because it's going to act almost like a modeling paste if you've ever used a modeling paste a light modeling paste it, it has some dimension but not too much okay and um, I switched it around so that I, I don't make I don't uh, cross contaminate or mess up blue tape is your friend and I am using my wow embossing pad. I'm using the full body weight <laughs> to apply it to make sure it's juicy, juicy when um, I, I put it down. I make sure I get all the spots. Another one of my favorite stencils that I use all of the time. I like these stencils because they would be like stencils that I would design, right? Like that's, what, that's why I, I, I love Seth so much. The stencils and, and the products he makes would be the ones that I would design. <laughs> and so um, I'm trying to figure out here, how do I protect? Ah, I grab a large sheet of palette paper and I lightly put it down and now I'm going to use my heavy hand as my grandmother would say and and place down the whole bottle of embossing powder because yes we always use the whole bottle that is a technique it's called the whole bottle embossing powder technique it, it is a technique <laughs> anyway that's why we have the lovely blue thing and um, blue thing blue thing blue thing yeah yeah okay here we go oh isn't that just gorgeous okay add more blue to make sure all the spots get covered and um yeah see all that blue right there oh the horror but it happens anyway so we put the top back on because um don't want to lose any more of that good product and now for the fun because here i realize i have a problem and the problem is, how am I <laughs> going to, do, 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 how am I going to, um, yeah, I'm, I'm drying here and I'm trying to figure out the problem. The problem being that I have this large space and I need to use my jelly plate on the large space. But you know what? We're gonna figure it out. Yes, we are. Let's 
So we're gonna we're going to tape it on this side. That palette paper, we put it on both sides, so both sides are going to be protected. And then we're going to go find. We are going to find our. I'm sorry. We are going to find our big plate. <laughs> Yes. Oh, the mad scientist had fun. Yes, she did. See, there's a reason why you need multiple size plates. Because sometimes you have multiple size problems. And so I am going to get my big um, 12 by 14 or what size is that big one? Okay, I have, and the reason I'm pausing is because I do have the 16 by 21. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the 14 by 12 or 14 by... Mm -mm. I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the big one, but not the big big. <laughs> Those are, again are technical terms. I'm somewhere trying to find it, and um, okay, there's my gigantic plate. I had to find a side that was quasi clean. Hmm. Yeah. My jelly plates kind of look like my stencils. Well loved. <laughs> anyway, so I realized, okay, so we have two options. I can bring the picture to the jelly plate or I can bring the jelly plate to the picture. Oh, I think I'm going to go with, I don't know, let's see. <laughs> this was so much fun debating this. All righty. So remember I told you about the right amount? This time I was less aggressive and I I put too too little. And then I pour some more. So again, if you if you do this approach, you're gonna need more. <laughs> you're gonna need a lot of those um, white pigment inks. And so maybe we can just convince Aladine to sell a bigger bottle. But what I did was when I realized this was my technique and how much I was going to use, I I placed a mad order to Seth. Seth, send me three more bottles, and he did. Thank you, Seth. Okay. So I see. That's see. This is the debate. The debate. And I decide that I, I need to put more pressure. And so I go this way. Uh huh. I apply the jelly plate like an embossing, like a big embossing pad to the design. And I'm trying to press it all the way in there. And it looks like I got it okay. And so I'm going to take the stencil off. And then I'm going to find the spots that need some touch up. And again, this is a part of the process. It's a labor of love. And so I'm going to... Um, take off my blue tape say bye to the pretty blue tape uh, and I'm going to now take my time put the stencil back on oh as risky as it is I'm going to try to align my stencil because what I noticed was I didn't press very firmly on the the edges I pressed very firmly and got a nice impression on the inside but on the outside of the stencil with these beautiful little marks, I did not. Now this stencil is known as Batik and it is literally one of my favorite stencils. Thank you, Natalie, for this stencil. I use it all the time. She also has this stencil as um, art foamies, which I also use all the time. Um, so I'm just going to keep... <laughs> putting my stencil back now clearly that don't look even but nevertheless <laughs> it's always funny when you watch after the fact but in the moment right in the moment I was having a zen moment and I was spending my my time um just making sure that the resist worked now I could have honestly just did this up front but I liked um the way that the jelly plate acts like a stamp and one it's faster but two it's also imperfect which is which is very reflective of this art form the ladies who create the patterns unless they are hand drawing them um, the patterns the stenciling the marks they make are very um, imperfect if you will right and uh, I was listening to a lady talk about it, and she was saying that 
though they all may use similar symbols because they mean something. So like each of the symbols in their culture are telling a story and they mean something. And so um, when you make a piece of cloth, you are telling a story, you are passing on a story or a piece of legacy to the future. And so um, uh, she was saying that uh, she can see when she sees some cloth, she can she knows when it's hers uh, <laughs> because of the of the of the symbols and um, that she's using there, her symbols. And so that was also a good takeaway for me, too, from watching that. I, I enjoy that part of the process when I was uh, I've always been a history buff, love the study of all the other cultures, um, love connecting to uh, my own culture and um, finding ways uh, uh, to grow in that re in that aspect. And so I read all the history books and the stories about the people that create the art because then when you're creating it, it, it means so much to you, right? Like this piece, it means a lot to me because I spent the time to learn about the people of Yoruba. Um, I'm sorry, the Yoruba people of Nigeria. <laughs> and so here you, here I am freehanding it now. So now it's no longer, it's not going to look like the stencil. And I think that's, that was a takeaway too. I would share that with you if you're new to my channel is I, I encourage people to take a stencil and use part of the stencil or, you know, so that it becomes your own. Um, in this case, I, I just loved the stencils as they are that I didn't, didn't need to modify them too much or um, what I tend to do is I tend to use one portion of a stencil as opposed to the whole stencil um, but I did use this this the entire batik stencil just because I love it so but I am now about to show you some other ways that I make it my own I am going to pull out um, some more of that pigment ink in a minute <laughs> in a minute in a minute okay patience is a virtue that's what my uncle used to say i think what you can't see is that i am oh i'm doing my i'm doing my freehand i see that little see the see the little <laughs> see my little my little marks up there yeah camera mm, sorry <laughs> trust me that's what i'm doing Okay, here we go. We're bringing it back in. We're trying to fill in some marks and uh, add some more of my own marks. And then I'm going to pull out, I think I use like the dark blue and I make a mark that is um, signature on most of my art. These little hashes that I make and the little dots that I make. Um, one of my videos I talk about, for me, they are a, are a way to pause and be present because they're so um, fine and detailed that I have to be there in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like they are tedious and they are meticulous, but they are also very relaxing. And so I'm going to make some of my signature marks here. You can't see it and I apologize. When I did the video flip, this is what happens. <laughs> You're going to see it on the other side. So we'll just patiently wait for me to make it to the other side yep oh, look at that i caught a clue <laughs> all right so as i was saying these little hash marks i make all the time on all my art and i liked them being imperfect some of them faded because this pigment ink will act as a resist and those marks will um resist the the dye when we go to dyeing the piece and so I'm going to put some on the other side kind of loose with it now I will tell you this so I tried another way to apply this pigment ink I put it in a paint marker and um, it worked but there's something magical about using this like a fingernail polish so way to go Aladine and Seth on designing fingernail polish for for mixed media artists <laughs> I guess it should be called pigment polish that's what we should call it anyway no one to ask me <laughs> all right so I think I'm done yay and now for the joy the second part step three apply the dye now 
if we were doing real indigo, we would dip the paper into an indigo dye. Or if it was cloth, we would dip it into an indigo vat. For this purpose, we are going to spray paint the dye onto the paper and see how it magically resists. Oh, that's glorious. It magically resists the, um, the areas that we have covered either with embossing powder or we have it covered with the glaze medium and in the middle that we have covered with the pigment ink. It just magically resists. And so I'm spraying with one hand and painting with the other. It's amazing what you can, what you can do when you <laughs> are being creative, right? And so you just saw me dip my paintbrush right, really, really CNN? Um, <laughs> you saw me dip my paintbrush right there into the mister. Whoops, I just poured it on. Yeah, your girl just was trying to create some very, um, some depth and some variation in the way the color will appear. I didn't want it to be all even. I wanted to show um, some variance because in reality, when they do it in real life, there's variance in the way the dye takes to the cloth. And so here I am spraying some Blue Moon and I'm gonna spray some licorice on there directly just so that I have some darker spots. And I'm using, um, I know someone's gonna ask me about this brush. And so let me pull it out and tell you that brush is a Princeton Neptune 6. It's a Princeton Neptune 6 and it has a very long, um, it has long bristles. So it does well with paint. Okay, and now the best part is the wipe off, right? You put it on, you take it off. This is very, very Karate Kid going here. Wax on, wax off. And why do we do that? Well, we do that to create one, to remove some of the dye off of the, uh, the resist. Like, um, the resist acts as a barrier, but it can sit on top. And so like, for example, when you look at um, this pigment part here, I use both a paper towel and I use a baby wipe. I use the baby wipe because I want to bring it back. So I want to make sure the white comes out. Now, if where I use a paper cloth, it is gonna be a lighter blue. Where I use a baby wipe, I almost get it down to back to a white. And I take my cloth and remove it off of my embossing powder area. Um, okay, now my favorite part is the details and the layers. And so this is where you make it your own. And so you see me pull out my ice in one of my uh, <laughs> Mad Scientist colors, one of my homemade indigo colors. I'm just trying to create some dark spots. Um, in the African indigo textiles, uh, depending on what country um, the indigo comes from, they'll have different color tones. For example, in Mali, the indigo is made totally different than the indigo textiles that they make in Nigeria, which is where the adore comes from. And so they're um, African indigos tend to be very blue, very dark blue, and a tend to be blue on blue and less, the white looks less white, if you will. Whereas in Mali, the African indigo mud cloth has, uh, it looks very white. So, so that's how you, you know, they look very different. And, um, I am going to keep playing with this. I'm going to add some more, some of my dots, my uh, my little dots. <laughs> and yes, I am going to add these dots everywhere. So as I mentioned, I'm just gonna, while, while I make the dots, we'll talk about other things, right? So I wanted to tell you that I have a free mini course where I show you more in depth how I went about ex um, exploring the um, new products um, by Aladine and how I came up with my mixes 
and also um i explore some oh hi rachel's head okay that should have been edited i apologize anyway back to what i was saying so that is free if you just go to soulrainacademy.com and you'll see my um faux indigo free mini course there i would love for you to join me i am about to um begin in june a um, challenge of sorts of my own. So last year, I did 100 days of mud cloth and I learned so much. I, I just really enjoy um, creating practices for art that, that, that allow me to explore and express myself, right? And when you create those challenges, one, they become a goal and you make them important. Like I actually will, will if I will spend 30 minutes just and it's not a lot of time 30 minutes a day exploring um creating an african-like textile for me that's what i'm doing so in june i'm going to do a 30 days of indigo and and then i will um turn that into a course and as i if you're new to my channel um one thing that makes I think me different in the space or how I like to add value. How about I say that? How I like to add value is I like to process the process of art, right? And so um, I'll spend my 30 days creating my own art spiritual practice and I will document what I learn along the way, but I will also process what my soul is trying to say along the way. And then, then my my intent is at the end of June, probably as a birthday present to myself, I will release a course. And right now the course is called Mood Indigo because I want to just address, um, <laughs> I want to explore um, the African, more in depth, the African textile and, and look at how we can create it on paper. But I also want to... Um, talk about needing to express emotion and and in that class and use um that as a way to do that and so my project is forthcoming <laughs> how about that um but if you're if you take the free course you'll be on the list and you'll know exactly when it comes out so here i am again making marks and making details i swear this is literally my favorite part i could do this part all day and even though I'm going to call it complete at some point <laughs> in this videotaping, the picture laid out on my desk for the next week and I would come by and I'd make a mark. So here you see me putting some watercolor down. Um, I use a ink tense um, watercolor pencil and I use a, a Stabilo, um, nope, it's a Derwent watercolor pencil in Indigo, number 36. I'm gonna use a, a Dino Wakely media stick to create some, just to create some texture and some depth and some shadows. But really, it sounds very artistic how I just said that. <laughs> At the time, I'm literally just playing. That, that was really what I was doing. I don't know if you noticed on the left, I put some white marks that I used with um, on the embossing part. I created a pattern, um, added some details to the stencil to bring it out, adding more, more variation to give the appearance of an imperfect die, right? And I... I'm going to, one thing I noticed about this piece later is um, the white on the right, right? You can always do this later, right? The white on the right seemed imbalanced to the, to the left side, right? And so later, I don't think I do it on camera, but later I will go in and add white marks on the left to create some balance with the white, that the heavy white that's on the right. Anyway. Here I'm waxing on, I'm waxing off with my wipe and my thing, and I think, I think it's done, right? <gasps> yes, my, okay, I keep saying my favorite part, but honestly, I think this is everybody's favorite part. When you pull the tape off and you see that your project is finished. And so I, I have it completed, and, and then I'm gonna come back 
quickly after I took some pictures because I noticed some things when I took a picture, i.e. there's a tip to take a picture, look at the picture because you'll notice some things. And what I noticed was I didn't like the dark blue lines, hashes I made. Um, once I put the white dots on it, you can't see the the hashes that are in between the white dot space. They just get lost. So I pull out the light blue. Um, I pull out the light blue pigment, the one that is called stratosphere, and I repaint those lines so that they pop a little more. And fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. So I would love to know what you liked or didn't like <laughs> about this project and um, how I would love to see you if you do an interpretation of this project. I would love to see that. You can tag me on Instagram and on Instagram I am Queen Panor, but if you type in Rachel Bellamy or Rachel Juanita, I usually come up too. But I have all that in my description box so that you don't have to search for me. <laughs> Just click the link and you'll find me. Okay, so here I am going to almost call it a day. Thank you so much. All right. How, how do we do? Say cheese. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me create this piece. Uh, and you are inspired to explore. I am going to continue uh, with my exploration, exploration of uh, indigo and the the adore technique. Um, and you're welcome to join me. I have a free mini course that I, um, as I mentioned throughout, that I have a free mini course that is open to anyone to take where I show you um, more of my weird science, <laughs> more of my weird science and, uh, and you get some of my processing. So if you're new to my channel, one of the things that I think that I add value or that's unique about my channel is that I am a coach. Um, I'm a leadership coach, executive leadership coach, Georgetown trained and um, got life coach certifications. I'm also a, a licensed and ordained minister, um, but here I am as an artist and as a healer and as someone who is on this journey called life, right? And one of the things that I offer as I am working and creating is processing what the soul is saying through the art, right? Or what, and I ask my 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 peeps to do the same right uh and so for me i had a lot of processing and a lot of stuff came up well one of the things was just the words right the word well the whole the whole color <laughs> and confronting uh my my resistance to the color indigo or the color blue and the, how that showed up and in the course um, the mini course, I do explore that a little more. But I did want to tell you that one of my takeaways just in making this video, this part of the video, was um, was looking at the word resistance. And, you know, the process that we did was we, we laid down various mediums to create a resist. And by creating a resist, the dye colored everything that wasn't covered by the resist, right? And I have found, um, as I was reflecting, that that's kind of like, in essence, the die would be kind of symbolic of like love, right? Or life or happiness or joy, right? And resistance, the resist is what we resist, confronting, dealing with, right? Um, for example, unforgiveness, right? We sometimes don't forgive people. And in our mind, we, we, are, we justify it, right? It's, well, I don't want to forgive them. They hurt me. And 
in my mind, the resistance is, is creating protection. But what we don't realize is that putting that protection in place, that resistance in place, by not forgiving, we stop love from covering all the parts of our heart. And it can only cover the parts that are not covered in the resistance, right? So yes, it was a fun project and I learned a lot and I so enjoyed the products and I, and the stencils and, and uh, confronting or learning to love the color indigo. And, but I really also took the time and I would encourage you um, to take the time to, to, as you create art, to sit with the art and, and see what you can pull out of it and how does that apply to your own life, right? Um, I just would thank you for, I want to thank um, the sponsors of this blog. Seth, thank you. I want to say thank uh, Aladine Products for making this great product line with Seth. And I want to thank Stencil Girl Products for their great stencils. And I want to encourage you all. And my prayer, as always, is that your soul may reign. Thank you. Bye-bye. Last but not least, I just wanted to encourage you to like, um, subscribe. Your likes and comments, they help my channel. Uh, I have a small channel, a new channel, um, and I just greatly appreciate it. I, I, I am known to uh, respond back to all the comments and I like the discussions in the comments, so I thank you. Um, I would also would ask, right, we've had to ask, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. Um, as I grow I more videos and create more experiences where, um, where we discuss uh, art and the process of how art empowers our souls to write. So that's my, my ask is um, that you would like, subscribe, leave a comment. And find me on social media because um, videos, I probably, I put out a video once a week once a week. <laughs> uh, that is the goal. And um, sometimes I put out more if I'm up in the studio playing and I produce more, but I try to put out one once a week. But on social media, I put out a lot more stuff. And so um, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. And all that is in my description box below. So thank you.